What's going on everyone, Juicebags here, and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. Now today, I'm going to be showing you all the quickest way to get through our monthly mission, No Fear, New Year, and get this pretty badass looking pet. Excited to see what it can do. Now, as you see, this year, I'm real close to completing it, but uh, the No Fear, New Year, pardon me, not this year, you need to uh, com have 35 wins without losing a sub-objective, kill 50 ogres, and win 25 incursions. So the ideal way to get this done, well, I guess the ideal way to get it done is just to play the game and have fun. However, if you want to blast through this and get it done quickly, and that's really what I'm looking to do this, this month, is I want to jump on my PS4 and get those characters caught up. So I want to do maps that are incursions that have a sub-objective with ogres. That's the quickest way to do it. Now, I, am, I did have to do 10 other maps that weren't incursions. Or, actually, I did ones that were that did have sub-objectives anyway. But, we want to make sure we're focused on those quite a few. So let's go back and look at the incursions. On incursion, regular incursions, all that's available as far as crossroads, no sub-objective, out of the question. So we need to go over to in-game incursions. Normal's just far as crossroads. Hard adds in the ramparts. On incursion, no sub-objective. Insane is going to add in the Gates of Dragonfall. No sub-objective there. And then finally, Nightmare 1. We're going to get two maps with sub-objectives. We get Forgotten Ruins, and we get Life Root Forest. Now, Life Root, of course, is everyone's go-to grinder in easy mode run. Problem is, on incursion, got no ogres. Forgotten Realms is it, it is. Forgotten Realms has an abundance of ogres, which really helps things out, and can be completed on Nightmare 1 solo pretty easily with just a set of Nightmare 1, maybe Nightmare 2, two geared builders. Now all of my builders have at least starter Nightmare 4 stuff, so it will be it's quite the breeze for me. I run through it. In fact, I was able to complete all of these runs just within a few hours of starting them which uh, was kind of nice. Nice to be able to knock the monthly out. I've uh, felt really terrible that I've been neglecting my PS4 DD2 characters, and uh, they need some love. So I wanted to hop on over there and really complete the month out on the PS4 and get those guys leveled up and squared away, hopefully into Nightmare 4. Now, as you see, we've got Chrome enemies, so enemies cannot be knocked up or stunned. And the hero deck I'm bringing along is, this is my builder here, or pardon me, my waller. Uh, the reason I'm bringing him along is because my cannonballer, who is now juice tank, I changed him from a tank to a cannonballer. His walls are shit, but his cannonball towers are decent. So I'm bringing him along and the waller. Then I'm going to bring my trusty apprentice, all geared out in fire stuff, not frost. And then my monk. Now, since I've got my Waller here, I don't really need the additional uh, blockade health, so I'm going to go with the Serenity ranged Gambit Sphere, which is going to uh, really blaze out my Serenity Aura range. So let's go ahead and get this thing built. It's a pretty quick run once you get it built up, and requires very little. Now, obviously, the more, uh, more, the more you manually assist in the run, the quicker it's going to go. However, not completely required. Now, let's see what resistances we, did we get. We got two physical resists in the middle. And to be honest with you, I think this is actually the easiest setup that you can get, which is kind of nice. Makes it a nice, quick, fast, efficient run. Now let's head on down. We're going to choke these guys right at the entrance as we don't want... You know, I don't want this to be a long run. I want it to go very quickly since I have to grind it out so many times. So I want to just get it done. So we're going to go ahead and get these blockades laid down. Using two in the middle. Although there's only one opening there. As you see, there's two lanes. And they do come out a little bit wide path. So uh, two blockades there. Now, since this is the physical resist lane, we're going to switch on over to our apprentice. And we're going to flame burst the area up a little bit. I'm using six Flame Burst Towers in the middle. Now the amount of DU you spend will vary depending on which lanes are which. Uh, since we've got both of these lanes coming out of the one entrance, I'm able to get it done with just six towers. 
where on the other entrances I'm using four towers for each lane. So we're going to go with six flame bursts right here. Now let's switch on over to our cannonballer. And over here, we're going to go with four cannons. Doesn't really matter your placement, just spam them around. <laughs> Activating pet, pet abilities and such. Alright, then we need to go over here. And same thing, I'm just going to spam them down. Now, I've got the monk, so I figured I might as well use the monk. Um, of course, I'm going to be using that Serenity R to give some additional DPS, and it really helps out quite a bit on the bigs. You know, the littles, of course, are going to get blown up easily by my towers. The bigs are going to get a little additional DPS from my Serenity R's. However, you do have enough DU left over where I might as well go ahead and get these bad boys boosted as well. So I got the big Serenity Auras with uh, that additional skill sphere. So that makes things nice. Just one Serenity Aura per lane. And then that gives me enough DU left to throw these bad boys in. And let's see, one more over here. Pretty standard issue, straightforward build. Um, since you can choke them off right at the entrance, it makes things a little bit easier. Now we do get flyers on this map, so we're going to add some anti-air. And I've actually got enough green mana left to put the first one in now, even though we don't have flyers on the first wave, so don't alarm yourself with uh, being able to get that down right away. And away we go. Basically, the strategy is going to be pretty simple. We're going to get everything up just once. You know, more DU left over. Of course, we'll, uh, we'll up them again. But we're going to get everything up once, paying, paying particular attention to these outside lanes. And the reason we're going to pay attention to them is it seems the magic resist lanes are a little bit weaker than the physical resist. The cannonball towers of course kill stuff, but there's lots of baddies. Where the flame burst provides a little bit of AoE, the cannonball towers are just gonna be single target. Now I didn't try uh I didn't try the setup with the um the heavy cannonball spears. The Uber for the Squire. I didn't try it with that. Although I probably should have, because like this that lane right there just looks like it would be absolutely perfect to have those uh, those rolling down and then of course that's gonna provide a little bit a little bit of AOE for me not much but a little something almost there 70 left just gonna go ahead and throw the upgrades in like I said it's more important to get the outside lanes done first because with this particular setup they are they are my weak lanes now, the reason I said this is the easiest setup is because I know these are my weak lanes, particularly this lane here, as the natural path of the baddies, of course, is to hug this tree and come up as this is their pathing. However, there's an objective here. So, running out of the gates, they're going to run right towards the objective, which, of course, we need to protect. So that's going to leave me a little hole right here. Now, luckily, I'm going to have 20 DU left over because I did have uh, the two physical resist lanes in the middle. So that's going to give me enough left over to have a little fun with a dummy. So let's see, let's get our other anti-air down. We're going to pop that bad boy down right here. And then let's get over here. And basically we're going to protect this opening right here. And we're going to do that with one of my Waller's dummies. Let's see, where can we get it? Right there, looks good. And Training Dummy Summoned. That's going to protect that little corner right there and help things out. Now, uh, I keep getting on my Monk. The best thing to do would probably be to hop on the Apprentice and DPS. However, 
my monk's got uh, Betsy with me, and I only have to level her up one more, one more level, and I get to evolve her again. So let's go ahead and get everything out here just up to once. The uh, blockade's probably the least important thing if you uh, have a dedicated waller. And then we'll hop, we'll hop on over to this outside lane. And whoop, that one already had one up. We'll get it upped as well. Now you see I'm not up in the Serenities, there's no point. You get a little additional range, but I've got so much range on them now that it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump the remaining upgrades just right here in the center. And get things started. Now, the more uh, upgrades that you, like in my situation, the more upgrades I'm putting on the physical lanes, the more I'll be able to leave them alone and then focus here where all the AoE is occurring. And uh, that'll make things go a lot quicker as it can burn down these packs very quickly. Now you are going to run into times where uh, you get some bunches coming up on one of the lanes, and it never hurts just to give a little assist. Like I said earlier, the more... You know, this is kind of an AFK build, to be honest with you. I spent many of those 25 waves starting it up, and mashing G every now and then, and turning around and watching TV. However, the more you interact, the quicker it's going to go. Now we see flyers coming in. We got chromed flyers and the anti air is working on them. Until you get the anti air up a couple times, you know, depending on how strong your monk is. My monk is actually my weakest builder right now. So depending on how strong your monk is, you may or may not have to throw uh, multiple ups into the anti air. Let's see, we got enough to throw one more down here. I'm just going to go right there. Once we get everything on the inside lane upped once, you know, we'll th I'll throw a few more ups on the outside lanes just to speed things up, but not necessarily necessary. Not necessarily necessary. Good lord, what a poor choice of words. <laughs> Alright, 29 baddies left. You see we got one more pack coming out of here, which they're so backed up in there. This, they're just going to get rolled, so I'm going to come down here and give a little assist, help speed things up. These guys are, of course, magic resists, so I want to just get up in there. If, you're, uh, if your walls on your cannonballer are strong enough, or maybe it's your first squire and that's all you have, you know, there's a good possibility of that, then I'd, uh, I'd probably suggest bringing along a little DPS. Bring along a Huntress. Do it upright. You know, or your DPS apprentice. Whatever. Whatever you're after. Alright, so let's go ahead and get one more. Let's get a full round of ups on the inside, including knocking these guys up to two. And let's get everything else up to once. Including these blockades. Yeah, I don't think that needs it. I got 345 left, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw the, the rest of these upgrades right over here on these things. And I'll throw... Uh, I'll throw some on to the other side next round. I'm stoked to get back on the PS4 again and start playing those guys. That was uh, the point, the loot and survive point of the game was a, was a really fun point. I mean, it is grindy. But, you know, all, all points of the game are grindy to an extent. You're going to have to do maps tons and tons of times to get all the loot you want. But excited to get that fired up again. Probably gonna do that uh, right on over at the Twitch channel. Yeah, this middle lane is just getting roasted. There's so much AoE going now. You know, having the physical resist, of course, the Serenity R is giving the full whack to it as well. Where really that's the difference on these physical resist lanes, or, or pardon me, on the magic resist lanes, what makes them kind of the weak lanes. Because the Serenity R is, is taking a hit. And even for, you know, if you get a bunch of little bads running around the big bads like this ogre right here. Obviously I have none close right at the moment. But uh, as they die and explode, of course, it does damage to the ogre and burns them down very, very quickly. 51 left. Looks like I got a few, what, just this lane and a few in the center, I believe. And should be all done with wave 3 here. So I'm going to throw this round's worth of upgrades over here 
But I'm not going to bother doing this in between. I'm just going to fire the uh, fire the lanes back up and do it as we're in combat phase. Now, of course, uh, you know, if you're in an elite set of gear and you want to just knock this out really quick, go up higher in Nightmare, uh, you know, go to Nightmare 3. You know, if you're capable of doing it, go to Nightmare 4, what the hell? Or if you have a uh, solid group of friends to play with, grind this map out on Nightmare 4, get a little loot, have a little fun, and make some gold in the process. As I'm not making very much gold right now, that's for certain. Let's see, that's going to make this side pretty darn solid. And here I said I was going to do it in combat phase, and I failed. Failed to keep my word there. Oh well. I didn't make you guys wait too long. These guys are all chromed up as well, but I don't have uh, any sort of knock-up or stun in this lane, so I am not, not even remotely alarmed with it. Got some more flyers coming in. See if this anti-air is going to be enough for him at this point. I'm not going to, I'm not going to attack these. Of course, my pet's going to sit there and pop off his little 193, 193 to him. I got a legendary that I'm going to just sell, but that's all right. Legendary sell for more than blues and purples, so by all means, drop away. Low item power legendaries, have at it. We got that ogre coming in. Doesn't look like he's taking any damage yet, so I'm going to get down here and see what's going on. There he's still out there pretty far. There we go. He's getting taking it to the face now. Let's get... Uh, oh, we got blocked. Yeah, one of them made it through. And we got a dead ogre. Outstanding. You're able to uh, just do it. If you do this map 25 times to meet your incursion requirement, your ogre requirement will be completed. And then all you'll have left is to win 10 maps without losing a sub objective. And I'll be honest, I was in that whole watch TV mode. I've been, I've been watching through uh, the first three seasons, or two seasons, or three seasons, yeah, of Vikings, anticipating uh, that TV show starting back up. So I AFK'd it in campaign mode. You don't even need to upgrade. <laughs> Just set up, hit G, and turn around. <laughs> so that's what I did. And how we come in here. One baddie left. Where is he? He's over here somewhere. Yeah, we're still in good shape. We took a little damage there to our to our wall. But that's all right. I'll just slap uh, this round of upgrades on this blockade and this side over here, and we'll be good to go. Now, this is wave five, and I, I think the ogre is going to be coming out of that same lane that did last time, the far right lane. So I'm just going to throw a couple of ups in here and just get on over there, just to make sure nothing goes nothing goes incorrectly. You know, it is nightmare. So I'll be honest. You know, I had the matches where I was turned around watching TV and I looked up and it said defeated because I put my blockade too far over a couple of times or whatever the case is, but don't let that happen to you. I didn't up, I didn't up my Annie air, but I, th I think it's fine. I usually up it one more time just to make sure that these flyers are burned, but I think it's actually going to be all right. See, and yeah, there's the ogre. He's coming out of that far side. So let's get over here and help out a bit. Down under. Now if they come out a little bit better grouped with one of those packs, it makes it really, really easy to burn these guys down. I mean, not like it's difficult at all. Particularly if you have uh, you know, a DPS character with you and you can just pound their face in in two seconds. It makes, it makes things very, very easy. Got a little pet food box there. Pet food, yum yum. I've been doing a lot of experimenting with pets, so I have lots of pets to level up. And uh, the more pet food, the merrier. Now with um, you know, the new experience levels that it gives you, 
uh, for leveling up your pets with food, powering them up. It, it's very easy. It's way easier than it was. And there we go. That should uh, complete the monthly for me. And I'm not going to hatch my egg quite yet. Because I've kept all of my monthly mission egg hatching videos. Are all going to be on a separate playlist. And hopefully I have them all. Now I did I did miss the, the uh, sword. I did something. There we go. Quest completed. No fear. New year. I, uh, I skipped the possessed sword. I know why I did it. I did it because of Terraria. <laughs> I was uh, kind of hooked on Terraria right at the moment. And I was playing both games. But it was difficult for me to put any time into DD2 right at the second. But now, of course, it's the other way around. And I've been hooked on DD2 for a while yet. And blazing it up in two different forms. On the PC and on the, on the PS4. So, uh, exciting stuff, Trendy. Loving it. So that's going to do it for this episode. That is the quickest way to get the January monthly mission all finished up. Thanks again for watching. Click that like button. Please subscribe. And we'll be back soon. See ya.